Thanks to all of you who came so far from across the country to join us here today. It is a great privilege and honor to be with my idols. These are the people behind me and representing the Hall of Fame and the select group that have been chosen that are my idols. To think that you can go back to Binger, Oklahoma as a four-year-old kid and learn baseball from the man who hit the longest home run ever, who was the best baseball player ever, my father. I feel very honored to stand before all of you today and accept this plaque and go into the Hall of Fame with the greatest people on earth. It has been a privilege and a pleasure to play Major League Baseball. Ever since second grade when Mrs. Rosser asked everybody in class what they wanted to be and I said, I want to be a Major League Baseball player and they laughed. And in the eighth grade, Frances Tate asked her class what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a Major League Baseball player, and they laughed again. I was only 5'2", had size 11 and a half feet, same hand and the same size head. So you might understand that Barnum and Bailey at that time were the only people interested in scouting me. By the time the 11th grade came along and Mr. Rhodes asked, I had grown a full nine inches, and now people didn't laugh quite so much had a chance to sign out of the free agent draft in 1965 and first time I was ever on an airplane coming out of that town of 660 people landed in Tampa Florida I left the plane I went to the ballpark warmed up the pitcher in the bullpen in the seventh inning warmed up the pitcher at home plate in the eighth inning and caught the ninth inning of the ball game and my career was underway a manager by the name of Cactus Jack Cassini was the manager there the next year, it was going to be Merrill Pinky May, followed by Lou Fitzgerald and Don Zimmer, by Dave Bristol, the first manager that I played for in Cincinnati, and the great Sparky Anderson. And Sparky, I hope you're watching today. It is a tough game, but don't take it quite this hard, please. Followed up by John McNamara and Russ Nixon. Boo some other time, folks. This is a time for celebration. One can only dream about that cornfield that my father first hit the baseball into and we lost it. But my mom and dad, Ted and Katie Bench, are here today sharing with us. Ted and Katie, that's your cue, Dad. I would hardly be surprised if you all out there haven't met him yet. He has taken this town by storm. My sister Marilyn is with us. My mother-in-law Arlene. And my beautiful and expectant wife for our first child, my first child ever, Laura. As you saw her stand up, you will notice that there are several scouts already interested in signing. Unfortunately, if she, the baby has her legs and my top, we'll probably call it lamb beer. <laughs> Believe me, what an honor it is. You can't imagine, as a youngster who always wanted to do that, from the time I saw Mickey Mantle, my idol, on television, and they said, He's going to be the next superstar from Oklahoma. He's a switch hitter. And I said, that's what I want to be. I had no idea that the Hall of Fame was waiting for me. I don't think that any youngster ever dreams of that or ever thinks that's possible. You might think of all-star games and World Series, but certainly you wouldn't think of the Hall of Fame because that is a place for the fantasies. That is the place for the Cy Youngs and the Babe Ruths and the Lou Gehrigs for the greatest players who ever played this game. And now to be a part of them and share with them this plaque to hang on the wall and to be a part of the greatest thing that's ever happened in my lifetime and in a lot of people's lifetime, to be a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. To quote one person who probably made catching more important outside of Roy Campanella, 
A guy by the name of Yogi Berra said, it's not over till it's over. Yogi, it's over. We have made it, and thank you very much.